At number two, we have the Detroit Lions. And Ryan, Detroit had an opportunity. It lose that last game against the Packers. They would have the number one overall pick. But this season, I guess just tell us, how much does it really matter if you have one or two? And what are the, the viable trade opportunities that these teams will or won't have? Yeah, I think the good news is they won that football game, and Dan Campbell appears to have that team going in the right direction. You don't necessarily have a lot of momentum in a final regular season game going into the next year, but it's better than getting your doors blown off for sure. And what does it mean for trade value? Had they lost, they have the first overall pick. No one's trading for that. Maybe they get Aiden Hutchinson, the local guy, and that's a story for a few weeks. But they get Kayvon Thibodeau at the second overall pick. And more importantly, they're not taking a quarterback because Jared Goff is their guy. More importantly than that, there's now an opportunity for a team to want to trade up for perhaps either Hutchinson or Thibodeau or Evan Neal or another offensive lineman at number two as opposed to number one. It'll be a little cheaper. So these are all good things for the Lions. Organization going in the right direction, won their final game against the, their division rival in the Bay Packers. And if all else fails, they get a great edge rusher in Kayvon Thibodeau to help that young defense get even better. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget that the Lions already have two first-round picks from that Matthew Stafford trade. Uh, so they could ultimately maybe swing back and get a quarterback later in the first round. I have them picking Aiden Hutchinson, like Ryan said, the local kid from Michigan. Uh, he kind of just feels like a Dan Campbell type, that he is a three-down defensive end uh, who's going to play hard on every snap, high motor. And I like the fact, too, that he's not just a hustle guy. He's got a refined arsenal of pass rushing moves. We saw how much power he can play with in that Ohio State game. Wasn't great in the college football playoff against Georgia, but this is a defense that desperately needs to get more ferocious, more dynamic along this defensive line, getting after the quarterback. And I think Aiden Hutchinson uh, will be that guy. But if they go Kayvon Thibodeau, that's fine too. Those are the two marquee blue chip edge rushers in this draft class. Edge rushers to the Detroit Lions at number two overall. The <laughs> Lions at 27. Uh, you guys have the same name at 27 and 28. One of you, we'll start with you, Chris, because you have him going at 27 to the Lions. Yeah, Devin Lloyd, I mean, he is an absolute missile on the football field. Um, reminds me of Darius Leonard, Reuben Foster, who was a first-round pick of the 49ers. He had a ton of tackles for loss in that Utah defense. Not even just his athleticism and his explosion. I think he reads plays at lightning speed. Uh, pretty good in coverage, too. He can match up and certainly run with tight ends down the seam. But the Lions, again, a team that, that has a lot of needs on the defensive side and on offense, uh, to get Aiden Hutchinson and then Devin Lloyd, I think you'd be looking at two more powerful players that can add some more explosion to Dan Campbell's defense. Those who like Dan Campbell players, uh, I had to pick Kevin Thibodeau earlier. Now I have him circling back, taking Drake London, the USC standout that Chris has talked previously about. He had him going a few picks earlier. He had a fractured ankle at the end of the season at USC, but he is a high point catch machine. He's actually a yak monster, even though he's not going to run a 4 3 40. I don't think he will anyway. Uh, and he saved a lot of Co uh, Keaton Slovis's uh, poor throws, if you will, throughout the season. He was one of the few bright spots. I love the idea of teaming him up with his former teammate at USC, Amon Ross St. Brown, who absolutely busted out uh, during the second half of this season as a rookie. He was fun to watch, and I think Jared Goff appears to be the guy. Give him more weapons, uh, and that would be in the form, in this case, of Drake London. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.